Uh, so let's let's talk about vaccines. I don't know if I can be calm and talk about vaccines. So the reason this came up, I mean, it comes up all the time. Every time I have to show my stupid vaccine card, my 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 vaccine passport. But it came up today because my wife. I think you you know my wife. I've I've told you that she's had COVID. She had COVID in December, um, and uh, and then in I think it was March April she got vaccinated with Pfizer, two, two jabs. Um, mainly she did it because um, she wanted to be able to travel and, and we, you know, she realized that to travel, she was gonna have to be able to prove that she was vaccinated. So uh, she got vaccinated luckily because indeed to travel outside of the United States, you've had to have vaccination and um, now she can travel, she has them. So, um, so she, had COVID in December, she's been vaccinated twice, um, and she's in Israel, and I think I've also told you that in Israel you have to get an antibody test because they don't trust your vaccine stuff. So today she got the, she had the, the antibody test and she got the results. And on the sheet that gives you the results from the antibody test, it says that a positive result, which means you've got the antibodies to fight COVID, is a 24.1 whatever, whatever the measurement is, whatever the, the standard is, 24.1. And uh, I remember when I got my antibody test after two shots of, uh, about five months or four months after I got my second shot of, uh, of uh, my Moderna vaccine, it was like at 190. And I thought, all right, I am ready to take on COVID because my antibodies at 190 and the minimum required to be positive is 24.1. Well, my wife's antibodies today came in at 1,400. 1,400. I, I think she could be surrounded by COVID, uh, you know, whatever, and she would fight them all off. It's, you know, and I guess, and this is, look, she had the, the vaccine six months ago. I don't know what her levels were when she had the vaccines. She has the natural immunity from having COVID. She has two vaccine shots and her antibodies are still unbelievably high. And this is the nutty thing is that as we move into the future here, they're going to demand in order to get, in order for you to travel, in order to do uh, you know, all this other stuff, right? They're going to demand that she gets a booster at some point. And put aside the whole vaccine mandate, I'll get to that in a minute. But the whole attitude is so unscientific. It's so one size fit all. It's so authoritarian. I mean, some people need a booster because the antibodies have crashed, they're way down. My parents who were in their 80s, who had uh, two vaccination shots, probably needed the booster. Their antibodies never rose much, even with the vaccine. They're in their late 80s, if they get it, they're probably not gonna survive it. Yeah, boost them up. But for anybody else, isn't it a question of what their level of antibodies is? If it's high, they don't need a booster. If it's slow, maybe they do. So why this one size fit all? Why, why is somebody who's had COVID required to get vaccinated? Maybe, maybe getting COVID is not as effective as vaccination. Maybe that's true, but maybe it's good enough particularly if you're young. Maybe if you're vaccinated, if you had COVID, you only need one shot of the vaccine. Suddenly it doesn't sound like my wife needed two if she's at 1,400, you know, almost six months after the second shot. There's no nuance. There's no uh, focus on the individual. One size fit all is the collectivist approach to everything. There's no consideration of actual risks. I still claim 
that if you're under the age of 25, why are you getting vaccinated? Why are children getting vaccinated? What is the purpose of that? COVID is here to stay. It's gonna be an endemic disease. Are we all gonna be expected to get vaccinated every year? Why? When, if you're under the age of 25, for sure, probably even under the age of 40, it's less deadly, significantly less deadly for children, by the way, than the flu. What are you protecting against exactly? I mean, the, the, the uh, FDA is now uh, uh, approving the vaccines for children. I mean, it's fine to approve the vaccines for children, but it's going to be mandated by school district after school district after school district. Why is anybody thinking this through? Now, granted, the vaccines are not very risky, but there's some risk, heart inflammation, particularly for young people. What's the risk reward? And who gets to decide what the risk reward is? It's not clear the risk reward is positive for young people. Not at all. Not at all. Not based on the statistics I'm seeing in terms of the risk for young people. And the statistics I'm seeing about the risk for young people from COVID have not changed since the statistics we saw out of China in March of last year. This is a disease of old people and people with comorbidities. It's a disease of old people and obese people. And it's insane to treat young people as if they're old, to treat fit people as if they're obese, to treat everybody the same. You know, it's the same thing with masks. You know, I go to university campuses and kids are wearing masks. They're all vaccinated. And on top of the vaccination, they're wearing masks. Why? It's just insanity. It, it, it's meaningless. It's stupid. But, I mean, I know the authorities are requiring it, but the students are going along. I, I, I think I told you in my debate on socialism with, uh, with Wolf, the one thing that got a real chuckle and a real, you know, they really got the kids upset was when I suggested that they shouldn't be wearing masks at the talk. They thought that was outrageous. I mean, the way this COVID is being handled is a, a collectivism on steroids. You know, we've talked for decades really now about individualized medicine, about customizing medicine to the individual, to his genetics, to his particular circumstances, to what he needs and not treating everybody the same. COVID has been the exact opposite. COVID has been the repudiation of the idea of individualized medicine. We're all the same, no matter our risk factors, we're all treated exactly the same. And then on top of that now, not only is the culture just accepting that, now we get mandates, whether it's, um, you know, now they want, they want OSHA, you know, uh, Biden, uh, asked OSHA to propose a plan to force uh, all large companies that have more than 100 employees uh, to vaccinate. I mean, this OSHA is about workplace safety. Workplace safety associated with the employer not creating a, not putting hazards in the way. It's not about whether people are vaccinated or not carrying a disease or not. OSHA has no authority to do this. I, I doubt this will pass constitutional muster with the Supreme Court, we'll see. But, I mean, OSHA shouldn't exist, put that aside. But the idea of, of, of again, one size fits all, all companies, no matter where they are, no matter what the circumstances, no matter what their workforce is like, I mean, private companies can decide to do what they want. Although I've seen, I've seen these um, tweets, God, that are comparing a company requiring it to the employees to get vaccinated with a company requiring the employees to have sex. 
in order to get the job. Like they, they're comparing it to, uh, what's his name, to uh, Weinstein, the, 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 uh, the film producer who would have sex with a actresses, kind of coerce them into having sex with him in order to get parts, right? Now, granted, um, if that's all Weinstein had done is, is kind of negotiate, negotiate, right? Uh, tell actresses uh, that they had to have sex with him in order to get parts, uh, he would have been deemed a scumbag, but he wouldn't have gone to jail. He's gone to jail because he also raped them, groped them, molested them. Uh, so he, he did much more than just tell them to sleep with him so they could get a part. Uh, that would make him a, a, a scumbag. But to compare the two, to compare a, a vaccine that has no risk, or has almost zero risk, with rape is sick. Absolutely sick. To compare uh, an employer mandate, which is trying to keep employees safe, you might not think that they, this actually keeps them safe, but the goal is to keep them safe. That's why a private employer would do this, with the goal of humiliating, subjugating, you know, raping forcing yourself on your employees to compare those two things is sick and, and insane and, and, and is an expression of a lack of ability to think. The risk is very minimal. And again, you, you can quit your job, you can leave, but, they, but think about the motivation of doing, of, of having the mandate versus the motivation of somebody trying to force you to sleep with them when they know you don't want to. God. It's, it's like the left comparing hunger to violence. It's like the left saying you can't be free on an empty stomach. It's, it's comparing things that just are not comparable. And you, you would think people would know better, but I guess not. Um, anyway, it's a crazy world. And, uh, you know, you, the vaccines, unfortunately, have turned out to be less effective than we expected when it comes to spreading COVID, um, as expected when it comes to hospitalization and deaths, hospitalization and deaths are very low uh, once you're vaccinated. Uh, they really do uh, protect you uh, from death and from hospitalization. They're just not very good at protecting the spread. It's, it seems like um, uh, COVID uh, is spread by vaccinated people, not at the same rate, nowhere near the same rate as unvaccinated people, but much higher than what we expected, much higher than what we, uh, what we would have, uh, yeah, than what we were promised. Uh, and that's unfortunate. It would be nice to get a more efficacious vaccine that uh, actually eliminated the spread as well. So you didn't become, you weren't infected. And this is why, again, anti-science, why are people focused on cases? Who cares about cases? We should stop reporting cases. We should stop looking at cases. I mean, somebody should monitor them. What's important is hospitalizations and deaths, and hospitalizations and deaths are down, even in places where cases are up. So, I mean, there's a correlation, but it's weaker. And uh, no, it's not going to be. It's not going to be all COVID today. I'm going to end COVID in two minutes, and we're going to turn to and economics, more fun. I mean, fewer people will watch. I, I noticed that because I guess economics are on the agenda today, very few people are interested in the show today. It's, it's really curious. Huh. Well, all, the, all people really want me to talk about is the cultural issues. And of course, I, I'm not controversial enough. If I was an anti-vaxxer, if I was an anti-vaxxer and pro-Trump, there'd be 500 people watching right now. Uh, that's the, the, cost, the cost you pay for actually being truthful and scientific. Anyway, the thing you should look at is, um, is uh, you know, hospitalizations and, uh, and deaths. Uh, COVID was never going to be eliminated. It was, uh, it, it was all, you remember, lockdowns were supposed to flatten the curve. 
Now it's not about flattening the curve. Now it's about zero COVID. And it's been like this for a while when we all know COVID's going to be here forever. So let's just get on with life and stop this ridiculous masking um, for, for particularly vaccinated, at least in New York, New York of all places. The stores have these signs saying we recommend unvaccinated people masks. Vaccinated people do not need a mask. So you can walk in and out of stores, uh, you know, without a mask. Here in Puerto Rico, you have to wear a mask indoors. It's, and show a vaccine passport every time you go into a restaurant. Really absurd and ridiculous. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know that people who are here like economics episodes. And I know Stefan likes art episodes. But the fact is that you guys are in the minority. Because of... 27,500 subscribers to your own book show. Only about 100 are here right now. Um, and if when I talked about uh, uh, cultural phenomena, it can get up to much higher than that, right? You are the tiniest of minorities. All right. I'm not saying masks don't work. I'm saying masks are unnecessary. Unnecessary in this world we live in. Yeah, and again, unless if I was 80 something years old, maybe I'd wear a mask. If I was unvaccinated, maybe I'd wear a mask. But if you're young and healthy, stop it. Just get on with life. Let's get on with life. Enough. Thank you for listening or watching the Iran Brooks Show. If you'd like to support the show, we make it as easy as possible for you to trade with me. You get value from listening, you get value from watching. Show your appreciation. You can do that by going to yourownbookshow.com slash support, by going to Patreon, subscribe star, locals, and just making a appropriate contribution uh, on any one, of those, uh, any one of those channels. Also, if you'd like to see the Your Own Book Show grow, please consider sharing our content. And of course, subscribe. Press that little bell button right down there on YouTube so that you get an announcement when we go live. And for you, those of you who are ready subscribers and those of you who are ready supporters of the show, thank you. I very much appreciate it.